Reese here. I wanted to shoot a quick video. I'm actually helping a lot of real estate agents right now who are growing teams. And so I feel like I've been talking to the people growing the team. I wanna to talk to the people joining the team, the buyer's agents, the listing agents, the ISAs, and give you a little bit of advice of over the years what I've learned. And so for those of you that don't know who I am, I built a real estate team in my first 12 months. I had three agents on my team. Within 24 months, I had 22 agents on my team. I did very, very well and, and I think uh, helped a lot of people around the country build their real estate team. And I learned a lot. I've learned a lot to teach the team leaders how to structure your contract. So if you want to future pace hiring an ISA in the future, how you could capture those dollars if you don't have one now, which you're, is a pretty good idea for people who are building teams, but for you joining a team, let me just tell you some things that you should consider. First of all, I believe that if it was, and, and, and I only have one framework to do this from, if it was my son or my niece. If my niece was gonna join a team, I'm looking out for her best interest. So again, sorry to all you team owners out there that want a bunch of people to work, with, work for you forever. I understand I was in your shoes, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about for the young, ambitious, hungry, humble, and smart, talented person that's not gonna be on a team forever, right? They have bigger ambitions like me. If I joined a team, maybe I should have joined a team, but I didn't, but if I would have, there's no doubt I'm unhirable for a long period of time. I went on to a team for me personally is, I didn't join one, but if I was, it would be to learn, understand the contracts, mentorship, and really it would have to do with budget, right? So your budget, if you don't have money to invest in your business, I think your first year, you should set a financial goal. And if you can't show me a path for lead generation or investment of time, then being on a team is gonna collapse time. It's gonna get you better training, more opportunities, more at bats, get the marbles out of your mouth, know what to say, learn a value proposition, learn the things you like and you don't like. There's gonna be so many things coming at you at once. Most of the time, because being on a team, like in my situation, I'm investing in leads. If I'm gonna invest in leads and give them to somebody, I'm gonna invest in their training so that they can convert the leads, which actually brings up the first problem. When you join a team, are you really an ISA? And here's what I mean by that. You know, some teams have ISAs in place and some don't. I think that's a great question to ask. An ISA is gonna be somebody who's responsible for setting appointments. And there's a lot of different structures. Maybe they have an ISA that sets appointments just for the team leader, which are listing appointments. Um, but they're not doing that for you. If they're not helping you, then I want you to understand there's nothing wrong, but you might be just a free ISA for a team. And what I mean by that is they generate a bunch of leads. Maybe the average cost per lead is $8 a lead. They generate 50 leads at $450. And in exchange, you're what? Gonna call them Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, show houses to them. And then in exchange, you're gonna give half of the money away. That's a lot of work for half of the money. Why didn't you just spend $450 of your own money? Well, in the past, you wouldn't have done that because in the models of the future, you would have had to buy the right technology, you would have had to buy the right systems and tools. I think a lot of that is getting disrupted when you have companies that are offering tools like KB Core and Chime, tools that are built into um, the actual cost instead of other companies that are, oh, you're new, you wanna learn? Well, here's a thousand dollars, go to our bold class. They're charging you for training. There's other people that are really agent centric that are looking out for you. So you wanna do the pros and cons and say, what is the value exchange? What am I looking for in a team? Am I, am I looking to break into this luxury market and I have a very rare and unique opportunity to work for you know, a, a luxury agent and maybe I have some limiting beliefs I need to come over, you know, get over and by working under them, I can work some of those thoughts out so that in the future I can could, I could do that on my own. Those are the things you have to think about when joining a team. You have splits. I think number one, if I was talking to my niece, I'd say, what are they giving you? And what are, what are they responsible for and what are you responsible for? Are they giving you leads? How many leads? How do you know when the person whose team you join is doing their job? And I'll tell you what a lot of them do these days, and embarrassingly, I've done it too, but you know, they just pitch you over into the fish pond and say, hey, here's all the beep things we couldn't convert, and why don't you call all of the dead leads that Mary and Joe and John and Amy couldn't get to convert. And hey, who, who knows? Maybe one of them stubbed their toe and got pre-approved for a loan last week and you could chase them down and, and get a loan. I mean, uh, get them a loan and get them a house. Listen, it's better than not having any, but in my research and my own statistical, you know, hiring people, I've learned that, you know, at, you know, if you get a hundred leads, 3% is gonna be a great number, 4% is magnificent. 
you know, and you got to take that into consideration. You can go and find neighborhoods right now with 9% turnover rate and bust your chops doing a, a survey, doing other things that you could do to be more focused, not have to spend the $450. So there's things you can do if you're opposed to doing them and you want to take the shortcut, you decided that you're going to be on a team no matter what, then you have to ask the team owner, you know, what would it look like for me to actually go on listing appointments one day? It's a good question. The happiest people have hard conversations, right? And so you want to ask them, am I going to be able to go on listings? What things would I have to do? Who's going on listings now? You know, what's that look like? You know, things to that nature. If you have ambitions to be a listing agent, knowing what that looks like now before you go get business cards, build this other team's brand by co-branding um, them with all of your different marketing and stuff, um, or maybe your business card with their name, introducing them to your sphere of influence and all of those things, make sure that the Ascension plan is there in place for you. So if you want to ascend to be a listing agent, and more importantly, I think probably the best thing, and this is me selfishly, you know, if I could join one or two teams, I would join a team that the team owner had, and this is, a, this is me telling you team owners that are watching this, and, and I'm giving you the best advice. I'm giving you the value proposition for the agent to win in recruiting. Have an essential plan, ascension plan for the agents that join your team. Get them to be on their own team if that's what they desire. Don't make it some awkward, weird breakup thing. Like they gotta leave and they can no longer be a part of you and you gotta shut them out of their CRM. I mean, at some point, everybody leaves a team. What's that look like? In, the, in business models now, the, today, the winning business models, the fastest growing cloud-based brokerages, They've understood that the, the cost of acquiring more people to the office, there's an expense, there's a lot of different expenses. So they've incentivized people to actually have an incentive to have you do better than them. And I think that that's where the new team leader is going is they're starting to actually be more positioned as a mentor and coach, but not a mentor and coach on your first deal, maybe a mentor and coach to your first ISA and your first three buyer agents and your first 100 or 200 transactions or maybe moving to another city, there's incentive and compensation and tracking and you know just the economics work where someone like me is incentivized to help someone go from buyer agent to listing agent to being on their own team, and that's a business model. So if you're gonna join a team, understand that sometimes that team's current brokerage has an incentive for them to keep you on the team forever, there is no economic incentive for them to help you go to the next level. And so you hit the law, the lid, the lid of opportunity. The biggest problem that the biggest teams had over the last five, six years was that there was a lid on the opportunity and we had to rip that lid off and, and find out a way to ascend people to not only where we were as a team owner, but even above and beyond us with a more abundant mindset that everybody coming in if they want to if they want to join your team and get to a thousand deals you welcome that you want to be their mentor their coach and walk them along the way because the incentive the compensation that is aligned with the company that you are building your business on is built in a way that makes you behave that way so those are just some things that i would think about and that i would tell my niece or my son or my daughter um, and so if you were looking at joining a team, I hope this video got you to think a little bit. There's a lot to, a lot to think about, but I think at the end of the day, you need to be able to set a goal. And if you're going to get there duking it out, you know, don't have a goal with the number. Show me how you're going to hit that number. I'm going to generate 44 leads. I'm going to speak to 22% of them. 3% of those are going to want to do something in the next 12 months. I'm going to be able to convert, you know, in the next 90 days after I'm fully trained X percent. And here's how I'm going to go from here to 100, 200, $300,000. Show me the math and make sure all of that math aligns to what you're being promised.